Well, hello there, my brothers and sisters. It's Josh Packard. Welcome to another episode of The Golden Image of Churchy Andy is a Lie. <clears throat> I want you guys to see I am worthless, okay? I have nothing that you should follow me or think that I am anything special, because I am not. I'm a, I'm a construction worker. I'm a lowly construction worker. I'm a plumber. Um, you know, in the eyes of people, because they don't know what plumbing is all about, but still. Um, I'm nothing. I'm a big, strong meathead, not very intelligent. You know, for some reason, the Lord shows me the truth, and I don't get it, but he does. Um, I'm, I'm not a particularly great husband. not a particularly great father. Um, I'm not particularly great at anything. Um, I'm just not. I have no idea why God would ever pick me or why he would do this, but he did. Um, I want you guys to see, I want you to see me for what I am is nothing. I am, I'm, I still cuss, burp, bark. I'm just like human as the rest of everyone. I still want to kick the crap out of these protesters. I still want to, you know, I'm, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll still fight a person if they come in my face. And if you make me defend my family, I will beat the crap out of you. I'm not, I'm not this nice peace loving Christian. Like most people think you ought to be just so you know. And I, I won't ever be, and I don't want to be. I mean, as you get to know me, you'll know why. <clears throat> but I want you guys to see. The reason I want you to see how crappy I am as a person, I mean, to the standard of everyone else, because I am what I am. I have no more, I don't care. But to anyone else's standard and to the religious standard, I am not a Christian. I don't look Christian-y. I don't walk the Christian path. I don't have anything to do with Christianity. Just so you guys know. I'll, I just follow Christ. I don't care about anything else. Okay, the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to see that I am the embodiment of Christ's righteousness on this earth. I literally am. I'm holy as he is holy on this earth. And the reason I can say that is because he said that to me in the scriptures and as well as personally. But, but people go, well, you're not holy. You don't look holy. Well, how do you know what holiness is? Have you ever seen someone who's holy? I'm holy, you guys. And you are too if you'll accept it and believe it and understand what Christ has done for you on that cross. That while you were an enemy to him, he reconciled you. I want you guys to see. I'm a pile of crap to anyone else, to anybody's you know, observable eyes. Some people I'm a good guy. Some, some people I'm a piece of shit. And it's always been that way. And it's, it will always be that way because no matter what. And anyone who has served the Lord in history has been considered a piece of crap by somebody enough to the point to where they kill them. Look at all the apostles except for John and Jesus himself. Look at, I mean, all of the uh, prophets were persecuted. I mean, everyone, you guys, you guys understand. If everybody likes you, um, you're probably going the wrong way, just so you know. If you're just lukewarm and easy to where you don't, you're not too hot nor too cold. You're just, you're just right in the middle all the time and you just try to get along with everybody. You might be the church of Laodicea or you might just be a Laodicea in yourself. But anyway, <clears throat> it's time to take a stand. I want you guys to see that there's two responses to Satan's accusation which will make him your God either which way you go. The first one is like me, where when I was accused, I was like, I'm a piece of shit, I really am, you know? But if I'm a piece of crap, I'm gonna be the best piece of crap I can. And went out and sinned to the max and trying to trying to fill my, my hole that was in my heart with all kinds of just filthy things. I'm a, anyone who knows me knows that's the truth. My wife, on the other hand, she's the other side. She tried to be good her whole life and tried to prove Satan wrong. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm a good person. Look at me. I go to church. I do these things. I don't cuss. I don't steal. I don't have sex before marriage. I'm blah, 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 blah. So she, she stood on all of her good deeds before Satan. But the thing is, is both of us serve Satan, not realizing it. Because I heard his accusation and agreed with it. And I just let it have dominion over me. And I went and served it. She, on the other hand, she, she heard it and greeted with it as well or disagreed with his judgment 
let's just say she agreed that his judgment was accurate or or that she believed that he had some sort of authority, let's put it that way, it's even better. So then she acknowledged his authority and the fact that she says, oh no, I'm not. I do this, 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 and this. I go to church, I believed in Jesus, I've done da 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 And so you've, you've given Satan the authority and the fact that you stood upon your own righteousness for the reasons that why Satan's wrong. So you served him. So there's sinners and there's Pharisees in this world. <laughs> See, the Pharisees, it's really hard to get to them. The sinners, man, they received Christ immediately. As soon as I saw him, as soon as he showed me himself, I was on my knees because of his love. Because I knew I was worthy of nothing. I was worthy of destruction. I was a piece of trash. If the Ten Commandments were what I was being judged by, I was worthy of hell ten times over. Okay? I mean, well, probably more than that. But I was conscious of it. I deserved hell. The last thing I expected when I met Jesus was to him to see all of that and show me that he saw it all and knew it. Even my worst fears and nightmares, he saw it all. And then the next thing I were, heard that was the last thing I ever expected on this earth was, I love you. <laughs> boom, I was on my knees. Boom. I mean, boom. And forever, I will serve this Lord. I was free in one second. I will serve you forever. Just because that one day. And I've seen much greater things since then. Okay? Boom. That's it. But the thing is, the religious, it's the hardest thing. Because they're blind to their obedience to Satan, not realizing it. Because they're being good, and that's how Satan pulls the wool over their eyes. There actually is harder to get through to them than it is to sinners. I mean, look when Jesus was here, the sinners immediately received him. But the, but the religious, the Pharisees, the self-righteous would not. Because they believed they were doing what God had commanded. Because they, but they didn't realize that they were acknowledging Satan's authority by evoking that they were obedient to the law, where the right, the right reaction when you're accused is what Abel did, what God did when he slaughtered a lamb instead of Adam and Eve, when Abel offered of the, the flock to where everyone points to the Messiah and to that blood alone, the two cherubim on the mercy seat, the witness of that blood and that blood alone. So when I look at myself, I cannot, well, you know, my friend Trent sent me a, a, a meme a long time ago, which is just so great, but it was Martin Luther said, when I consider myself, I could never see how I could be saved. But when I consider him, I cannot see how I could be lost. And that is the truth. So then I don't play that game with Satan anymore. I don't even acknowledge his authority in one little bit. My salvation and your salvation, when I look at you, I know that you're saved. And, and the deciding factor of your salvation is the fact that Christ Jesus died and rose again and ascended. That is the basis for my foundation, for all of my faith, and for all of my assuredness in my salvation as well as yours, though I've never met you. I don't need to. All I see is that Jesus Christ has overcome. That has been applied to you. You didn't know is done vicariously by someone else. But <clears throat> there's been somebody in the stead of Satan who uh, has been telling you, oh, no, 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 that doesn't apply to you. You're not saved. You're not in the likeness and image and dominion of God unless you believe. So what happens is, is since you can't believe that you, as you stand as an enemy, are right before God, because you won't accept that sacrifice or you don't even know you're ignorant of it. Then if you go and try to believe, now you have to enter into the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the kingdom of your imagination because you'll never find the kingdom of God in the knowledge of good and evil. You can't enter the kingdom of God as long as you're acknowledging Satan's authority. You can't enter in because Satan is still your Lord. So you might call him Jesus and you're doing good things and you're going to church every Sunday and doing everything right. You don't cuss, you don't burp, you don't fart, you don't do anything. You're just, you always think pure thoughts or you like people to believe that you do. You go to church every Sunday, you read in your Bible every day, reading devotionals, but it doesn't do anything for you. You can't see or understand anything. You can't wonder why. But you still put your nose in there because you like to follow the rules. You like to be 
patted on the back by men and you like to be told that you're right. But you're wrong before God. And all of your works testify that his blood was not worth anything. That his salvation is a lie. That he didn't need to come. That there was, you had everything under control and you could have had it under control even if Jesus never came. And on top of it, because you gave Satan the authority, he is your God and you call him Jesus. It's pretty crazy stuff. So that's why don't you be free. And that's why we must be the truth before people. That's why people need to see that I'm a pile. There's nothing that I'm worthy of anything, that I'm a good person, that I would even match anything that you think a Christian ought to be. I might to some, some others I won't. But that's not the point. The point is, as long as you're based upon me and you're weighing me by my conformance to the, your idea of right and wrong, then you are outside the kingdom of God. That's why I look at you. I can tell you things you are doing are damaging. I can tell you the things that you're doing are contrary to Christ. I can tell you all these things, but I can never say that you're not saved. I can just say that you are ignorant of your salvation, that you're ignorant of Christ, that you're ignorant of anything inside the kingdom of heaven. It's, you're not. You have never been there. You've never set foot there. You don't even know where I'm at. I'm here to tell you, I'm holy, you guys. And holy just means that I am satisfied with Jesus for all of my needs, for righteousness, for peace, for joy. All of my supply comes from him. I don't need your opinion. I don't need my wife's opinion. I don't bow to my wife. I don't bow to anyone when it comes to the things of God, ever. And I might, and you know what I mean? I might, not consciously, because you, you know, this is always a battle and Satan's crafty. I'm, he's way smarter than me. So I have to, and, you know, I constantly have to go into Christ and stay in him. I am righteous because he is righteous. He has saved me. I'm right because he rose. I'm right because he ascended. I'm right because he came and dwelled and made his dwelling in my heart. That he will never leave me nor forsake me. That he will begin or he will uh, finish what he began in me. That wherever I'm at is where I'm supposed to be. The Josh you see right now is the Josh Packard. There's no other me on this earth for you to compare yourself to be. Whatever I am right now is what I'm supposed to be. And then as if the Lord has need for me to be something else, he will supply it and he will change me as he has need. He will equip me and modify me for whatever he needs, when he needs it. So as far as I know, I'm the exact epitome of whom I'm supposed to be right now. I'm doing exactly that I'm pleasing to God. Everything I'm doing, I'm assuming I'm pleasing to God like Jesus is. I just assume it. Whatever I'm doing is right. There's some things I don't want to do because they're damaging to me. But as far as God and his ultimate plans, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'm, I'm the who I'm supposed to be. I'm at the point of developing my sanctification where I'm supposed to be. I am sanctified as far as I know, unless the Lord sanctify me further. But whatever it is, it will be according to his timing and according to his will and for whatever employment he wants to put me at. I'll be the base parts. You guys want to be the pretty face of the body? I'll be the butthole. I'll be the dirty, scrunchy toes. Whatever portion that God needs me to be, I'll have to be. I'll do it because I see the glory of his kingdom. I don't want to do everything. There's a lot of it that scares me, you know, just like everyone else. Because, because you never know. If you give God the reins, you never know where you're going to go. You know what I mean? But the thing is, you got to realize it's for my best and for the, my development and my growth. For my family and for my children, or for my, my children, especially my wife, my growth is paramount for them. Because through my growth and me being able to lead and, and to show them where, where to find pasture and water and rest and peace will be so that later on they don't have to have these battles inside their conscience. First of all, like sinners do, whether even homosexuality or LGBTQ, whether these things are even right or even worth even thinking about or the religious, or they're trying to be good all the time, which it brings nothing but death into their hearts. I don't want my kids to seek to be over-righteous much, nor do I want them to seek to be evil so much. I want them just to be, they're just doing whatever they're doing. I want them to enjoy every moment of their lives. That's the biggest gift I can give to my children. 
to let them know that they are right where they're supposed to be, where God has, has got them, that he loves them, that God, and leave them in the hands of God their entire life, to where Satan is not acknowledged, to where his authority is not acknowledged by my children. Because Satan, he, he wants to be acknowledged. He doesn't care whether you agree with him or disagree with him, as long as you're just acknowledging him. That's all he wants. Because as long as you're even acknowledging him, you cannot acknowledge Christ. Sorry. So. <clears throat> so I want you to know, I'm a piece of crap, but he saved me while I was his enemy. He loved me and cleansed me while I was his enemy. Even by being an enemy now, I couldn't lose what he gave me while I was an enemy. Having this knowledge and this peace with God, and this it's called righteousness, to where I belong, to where I'm now a child of God, that I'm in the beloved, and I believe it. I reckon it. I live as though it is the absolute truth. And I'll tell you right now, I have nothing but joy. I mean, of course, in my life, you know, I have fights with my wife and my kids are sometimes disobedient and work sucks sometimes, of course, but I have this enduring joy and underneath it all, I always have this full feeling in my heart all the time, which is holiness, by the way, because I'm, my needs for satisfaction and my righteousness are all met in Christ. I have no need to cower now and I have no need to even, to even weigh myself or to even consider myself as to whether or not I am going the right direction because I found my direction and it's keeping my eyes on my Lord and seeking with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. And that's the only thing that's worth employing yourself to is Jesus. He's the only thing that conquers death. I will lose everything when I die. I'm gonna lose my children, my wife, I mean, temporarily. I'm gonna lose everything. There's nothing, I can't take anything with me, you guys. So knowing Jesus, he's the only one that has overcome death. I want to know him. I want to, I want to be with him in that overcoming. I want my children to join me in that. I want them to have the hope of the resurrection, that they're going to see me again, that I'm going to see them again. Because the fear of death is what's controlling the entire world, you guys. Everything's finite. All resources are finite. Life is only finite, so you gotta get what you can before you die because it's coming. And that's all they have, you guys. That's all the religious have. Be, oh, well, we're gonna go to heaven someday. Well, that's, it's not, heaven's not really a place, you guys. Heaven's a state of mind with Christ. It's, it's being a, a cleansed conscience with him, being in fellowship with Christ. That's heaven, you guys. Whatever the afterlife is, I know it'll be great because I know him who made it and who loves us. I mean, that's great. I, I, I do see that. But you realize there's nothing in the Bible describing that. It's all talking about now, you guys. Everything is for now. Overcoming now. Living as overcomers, which I am an overcomer. I'm one of the overcomers, and I'm trying to teach you how to be an overcomer too. I've overcome Satan and all of his works. I've overcome it because I've put my faith in Christ. I've washed myself in his own blood. I've purchased gold refined by fire. I, I have the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing can stop me now, not even Satan. He can't because I've, it's like I've clothed myself in Christ, and I see that as like a you know, like an exo frame of Christ. So it's like I, you know what I mean? And I move my one little hand and it's like this big giant freaking arm goes out in front of me. You know, it's just kind of like, the, remember the, if you've seen the Kung Fu Panda 3, whenever he, he gets inside that big dragon and he, he makes that chi dragon and that big dragon's like kicking butt for him and he's like, he's moving his hands and whatever else, but it's the dragon really doing it. Well, that same principle is kind of like with, with when we clothe ourselves with Christ. I know it, and for me, it doesn't seem like I'm doing much because it's like I'm just slowly chipping away at people, but every day I'm preaching. And it's always the last person I expect is the one that hears it. You know, it's just, it always is. 
So, I mean, I don't know. I just want the whole world to hear the Lord and quit acknowledging Satan and acknowledge that sacrifice. Acknowledge that Christ is the Lord. Acknowledge it, not just intellectually, but to literally live as though you're saved. Live as though his word stands over Satan's. Don't even acknowledge Satan in his accusation and the knowledge of good and evil, comparing yourself with others and according to images of your own imagination. Quit doing that. First of all, it's fruitlessness and it's worthlessness, and the only thing you'll gain behind it is men's pats on the back. People go, oh, good boy, yeah, you're being a good godly man. Yeah, and this is Pastor such and such. Oh, yeah, this is Pastor such and such. He went to this seminary and blah, 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 blah. And this is a man of God, a godly man. And he's an author and a, and a PhD. And he's got all this stuff. And he's just this godly person. Well, that fuels so much of what they do. And the people saying, oh, no, 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 no. I like Chuck Swindoll. Oh, no, 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 no. I like John MacArthur. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm a Greg Laurie man myself. Or I'm a blah, 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 David Jeremiah, blah, 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 blah. Or all these people. And, and, and trust me, they did not die and raise for you. They are only men with like passions. They, when they open the scriptures, it doesn't say anything different to them than it does to you though they read it differently, though they see it differently sometimes. But the thing is, you have the same access, you have the same spirit as they do, well, if they have the spirit, you get what I'm saying. But you, what makes them preeminent over you in any way or shape or form? I don't bow before any man. I have the scriptures myself. The Lord has revealed himself to me, he says in his scripture that he says that he'll write his laws upon my mind and in my heart. There'll be no man need to teach another, know me, for all shall know me from the least unto the greatest. Anyone that claims to have more knowledge than you, or acts like they do, or acts like they're good, they're an agent of sin at the enemy, just so you know. All right, my brothers and sisters, be strong, overcome. You have him that from that switch moon from the beginning. He loves you. You have been redeemed. You are holy as he is on this earth. Now it's reckoning it, living it like you're saved, living like the battle's over, living like Satan is no longer here, and acknowledging that he has not even one place to put his foot because Christ has conquered everything. He's ransacked everything. Everything belongs to Christ. There is not in heaven, not on the earth, not under the earth, nor in the seas. Is there any place for Satan to have any rule anymore? He's an illegitimate authority. Quit obeying him. Quit acting as if his word means anything. Quit trying to exalt yourself. Quit abasing yourself. Quit it. Everything is bound up into what, as whether or not Christ rose from the dead. If he rose, then you are perfect as he is perfect. And that is the word that he has spoken to you. That is the scriptures. That is exactly what Christ came to accomplish. If there is anything less and you are anything short of that, then you deny him in an entirety. You guys got to understand. I don't know yet what perfection feels like or looks like 100%. But I assent to the fact that Christ has done it. Whatever it is, and as he manifests it to me, it is the truth. I don't care. Satan is no longer in charge. He has no more dominion. He has no more nothing on this earth or under the earth or in the heavens or in the seas. He does not have anything. He's not Lord of anything that you should listen to him. In anything or any matter, to agree with him or disagree with him is still to acknowledge him. Stop it. All right, my brothers and sisters, when you are accused, point to Jesus and him alone as to why you're still accepting the beloved, why nothing can remove you, why nothing can change it, why it's done is Jesus. Point to him for yourself, for unbelievers, for Mormons, for Muslims, for Jews, for anyone who doesn't know it. This is the information they're missing that Christ has utterly 
save them. All right, my brothers and sisters, have a wonderful day. Overcome. Christ has done everything. All right. He loves you. Have a good day.